Hi, my name is Trent Milam. Welcome to Citizen Science Corner. I'm an AmeriCorps member with Green Mountain Conservation Group for the 2020-2021 season. And Green Mountain Conservation Group is a nonprofit organization dedicated to protecting the natural resources in the Ospie watershed. We're here today for our second Citizen Science Corner, and we are very thankful to have Brian and Carol Taylor with us um, to answer some questions so we can get to know them. April is Citizen Science Month, and we're very lucky to be highlighting some of our dedicated volunteers. So, Brian and Carol, how are you guys doing today? Very well. Good, yeah. Enjoying this spring. Daylight savings next weekend. Oh, uh, well, don't remind me of daylight savings. <laughs> moving, moving the clock forward. Um, if you guys could just start by introducing yourselves and just a little bit about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, um, what you spend most of your time doing. Uh, let's see. We live in Freedom, and uh, we're both retired, and... Uh, let me just kind of give a little background, if I may. Yeah. Uh, Carol is one of these Massachusetts people who married a guy that used to live up this way and ended up up here. I mean, she and her husband uh, uh, had rental cottages to her mother-in-law on Osby Lake going back until the 1940s, I think possibly even the 30s. Mm. And unfortunately, her husband passed away shortly after his retirement. Mm and they moved from Massachusetts up here, so you're not really enjoying your time in life. Uh, during the time they were raising their family, I was raising mine, I had uh, grew up in Barnum, grew up in the town of Effingham, and left after high school because of lack of jobs and to get the military behind me, so I spent three years in service. And upon uh, discharge, I found an apprenticeship in Connecticut Mm. which I thought I'd do for a few years and then go to California. Well, a few years turned into 46 years with a couple. <laughs> and uh, uh, during this time, uh, I say, like I said, my children and her children used to play together. And uh, we, coming up here visiting family and stuff like that, I got to know her and we ended up getting married and had mm. a good uh, few years when I put my last part of my career. And uh, growing here, and property here, and family here, I returned to the area after retirement from the company I was with, which is a defense contractor. Okay. Uh, I grew up in the area, and uh, I never appreciated all the things we had. We just took it for natural. We drank out of any water anywhere, ate mm -hmm. the ice out of a of slate, things <laughs> like this. And uh, until my senior year of high school, I never really went up on the White Mountains except to ride along with my mother, who yeah. enjoyed it. She would drive through with some of her uh, friends and relatives and take me along because I guess I was a little brat at times and that's the only way they controlled me. <laughs> but uh, that senior year, one of the summer, summer people uh, said, hey, let's go hike, hike Green Mountain. Uh, excuse me, Mount Washington. Mm. We used to hike Green Mountain every summer two or three times. And uh, so off we went. So I think we jumped off over on the northwest uh, side, went up over some of the presidentials and stayed at Edmonds Cole overnight. This was last week in August. Temperature dropped below freezing. If it wasn't for the shelter, which is no longer there, we probably would have died of hypothermia. Mm -hmm. But anyways, young and dumb. So <laughs> we enjoyed that very much. And uh, I did some camping and worked for the Appalachian Mountain Club as a volunteer from mm -hmm. time to time, uh, working out of Camp Dodge. So when I got back to the area, I wanted to see if we could preserve it and help the youth understand what they had, because they may not know it growing up in it, as I did not. And that's how I became involved with Green Mountain. And Carol being a big supporter, she went along with everything. Was a, has been a volunteer. I, we do not recall how many years now. Yeah. yeah quite a while. A, a number of years, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we started with the uh, water sampling and the tributaries to the lake for yeah. two weeks. Sorry. Anything yeah. you want to add? You've done a nice job. Well, <laughs> she says that all the time. <laughs> so, what uh, river or what program with Green Mountain is are some of your favorites? Which ones are you involved in or have been involved in? Uh, well, as I mentioned, water sampling and getting to understand that, 
and uh, working with uh, Corey Lane at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we started it and we still plan to do it again this year. It was, you know, last year it was abbreviated. Right. But along the way, uh, I don't know how, but uh, they asked me to be on, be on a building committee. And uh, uh, that sounded like fun. I'm not much of a craftsman. I, my apprenticeship was a machinist to a die making. But uh, we used to sit over in the hunter's house, freezing to death in the porch, trying to come up with ideas and how to come up with a larger, better, better structure and things like that. And we chewed on a lot of things with Jason Earl and Jim Autobach and, and others. And one day I was looking at the uh, newspaper and I saw this uh, ad by the town of Leavingham washing off a place mm. on the Osby River. And I kind of kiddingly called up the executive director of Red Boats saying, hey, you've got a place that's been auctioned off next to you. It's right where all the watershed goes mm -hmm. across the state line. Yeah. And uh, you're going to buy it? And she thought I was kidding, so she looked it up and did some mad scrambling. Within a week's time, I was able to get somebody to sponsor her. And they bought this uh, house on the river, well, how many acres, four acres, I think, and uh, uh, then embarked upon improving it. Yeah, yeah. I used to hang out a lot around here because I like the big machinery where they're dredging out the burial pool and mm -hmm. doing other things and kind of neat. So that's how I got involved with that side. And, and now I've taken an interest in uh, land trust conservation. Yeah. As my father had a number of acres in uh, Freedom, which I picked up about 65 acres along a brook called Square Brook that goes into the Berry Bay section of Osby Lake. So I like to see more land preserved because I've seen what has happened from the time I left to I returned. Town's population, both Effingham and Freedom, have quadrupled. And some of the landfill and whatnot that occurred before zoning is, I would call criminal. So I'd like to see as much land preserved as possible for wildlife yeah. and people's enjoyment. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. And Carol's trudges along and <laughs> whatnot with me. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, I started coming in the area in 1957. And uh, I had met my husband just before that. We were dating and invited me up for a weekend with his family. So I pitched in and helping take care of it. There were six cottages. And they weren't just little small cottages. They all had three bedrooms mm -hmm. and all the other facilities that went with them, except one was a two bedroom. And uh, so I didn't really know how to do anything except clean. And I'd never been taught anything else. So it was a new experience for me. So I learned when uh, my husband and I took over the six cottages, uh, I learned how to uh, paint and sand, refinish, mm -hmm. putty windows, lay flooring, do carpentry work, repair furniture, restore furniture, yeah. all kinds of things that I never thought I could do. Yeah. So I did all that, taking care of the cottages, and kept us pretty busy. So I didn't get out around because I had three young children at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started really taking care of the cottages myself. The youngest was two, and the next child was uh, four, and the oldest was six. So they kept me pretty busy along with, you know, taking care of things. Yeah. So then I helped Brian out when I married him after my husband died. I kind of didn't get into involved in things. I stayed over at the bay where we lived. And uh, Brian was getting involved in many things and asked me to join. And I thought it'd be fun, so I did. And I've had fun doing it. <clears throat> and I look around at this facility and I remember it when it was just a shell mm -hmm. and how paint. Mm -hmm. And uh, Blair teases me that I taught her how to play paint. <laughs> and uh, I was kind of strict on it. Yeah. And uh, so it's kind of nice to see 
the things still look wonderful yeah. as what they did at the beginning after it was finished. Yeah. And it's been fun and I've enjoyed working along with Brian on the testing. And we've been to several functions that have been here and I've enjoyed those. So it's been a very nice experience. Yeah. My first husband and I always did conservation around the bay and was, you know, very uh, thoughtful of what we did and what was to happen. <clears throat> and Brian, when I met him, was of the same mind. So it kind of blended together. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. Well, we, we definitely have the two of you to thank for this building that we enjoy being a part of every day. So we're really thankful for that. Um, and I'm just curious to know how each of you would say that citizen science uh, work has impacted your lives um, and what you find valuable about it. I think at this point, it's what we want to leave behind that counts. Uh, by that is going to local schools here, our whole understanding of nature was first day of fishing season, we got out on the stream, South River there at the school, and the first one that caught the fish got a dime from the teacher. And that's about it. Now mm -hmm. you have uh, fish being hatched in the classrooms, you're going down for micro uh, vertebrae studies in the streams, and mm -hmm. we had nothing of that growing up. I recall uh, the water mill in Giza Falls was in full off full operation when I was in grammar school. And the teacher say, oh, the river's running green today. I guess they're dying the wool green, mm. and things like this. And we just took it for granted. Yeah. Well, in Ossipi, the <laughs> town dump was in the Pine River, right there on the east banks of it. And we just say, hey, then Mother Nature would take care of all this. Now the students are realizing what they do will impact following generations. So what we did was impacting theirs, and we're trying to, I don't know, say not make restitution, but encourage this type of education. Because, yeah. and again, the population growth and the demand it's making on Mother Nature in the area is huge, yeah. is huge. And it's not going to be any less because well, the, United, the world looks at the United States. I've been fortunate enough to travel with much of the world. And the United States is the place to come. So our population is going to go up and not down. No matter mm -hmm. how bad things might seem here, let me tell you, they're a lot better than many of the countries I've been in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I have noticed that when my children were young and they would go bathing in the lake, they would you know, they were really young, like six months old when we started each one of them, that the lake was so crystal clear, it was like a glass of water. Mm -hmm. You could see all the sand on the bottom, the pebbles. It was so lovely. And there were lots of tiny little minnows swimming yeah. around. And the children would like to try and catch them. They never could, but they thought, you know, they would someday. Yeah. And it was so nice. And as the years went by, it all started to disappear. The more boats that got out on the water and the more ski doos or jet skis, I should say, mm -hmm. that was out on the water disturbed the lake. There was more growth and it, that was disturbing. I would like to see everything go back to the way mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. So I'd be interested in uh, following along those lines. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely see the changes over the years and yes. and just how more people are coming up here and and sort of recreating in a lot of our, our bodies of water. Um, well, just a, a more of a, a question just for to get to know you guys a little bit is, do you have some hobbies or pastimes, things you are really interested in? I know you've talked a little bit about some of those, but do you guys have any hob favorite hobbies or activities that you like to do? Her case is work. <laughs> Mine, yeah. not really. Uh, I love gardening. And yeah. I enjoy getting out and making things look better than it was the year before. Mm -hmm. So I like to and be conscious not put anything down onto the ground that mm -hmm. would hurt the soil yeah. or that would benefit, use more organic things. And I love vegetable gardens mm -hmm. and it's always a 
problem every year trying to stay ahead of the deer that would come in and eat all the plants yeah. and the flowers. I like lots of flowers around and shrubs to keep things from washing down into the lake. Mm -hmm. And I never had gone hiking, not until I married Brian. I never, we never had time. And my first husband, uh, he died uh, in, uh, several years ago, 25 years ago. And uh, so he was in the service and he said, I hiked all I wanted to, mm -hmm. we're not hiking. Yeah. And so we hiked, and so Brian took me camping in Hawaii, wow. on the trails in Hawaii. That was a nice experience, and we've been several of the places, so I enjoyed hiking and the gardening. Yeah. I like boating because we've always had boats, mm -hmm. so I like boating, kayaking, canoeing. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, those are just great outdoor activities. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but coming back and not, I'm finding whole generations of people have disappeared and the vast majority of them know I've become involved with possibly too many volunteer organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, Old Home Week, the local fire department, uh, uh, historical building in South Effingham, uh, Green Mountain. Seems like this. Some of us passed Sandling Volunteer Act, which is a historical site uh, where my father went to uh, school, mm -hmm. and things like this. So it occupies a lot of time. And we have uh, you know, 11 grandchildren between us. Yeah. yeah. They got our attention, although they haven't gotten a lot of attention this past year. This uh, COVID has really had a big impact in the area with a huge number of people moving in. Uh, taking their little cottages and make them year-round houses. So mm -hmm. uh, my personal concern is some of the septic systems. I grew up, these cottages are used for two months during the summer months, and they're one step from an outhouse, if not that. Yeah. Now, they're turned into a year-round home with washing machines, dishwashers, and bathrooms and showers and stuff. So some of the places are not built on very big lots yeah. and uh, without good systems. And, that's my big concern, and again, how the lakes have changed. I never recall a cyanobacteria bloom in mm -hmm. my life uh, growing up. Now it's a common occurrence, it seems, every summer. Yeah. So again, that's where the science part comes in and the education right. review. Thank you guys. Um, and it's really cool to hear the different ways that you've been involved in the community over the years and the impact you've had. So we're really thankful for you guys at Green Mountain. and excited that we got to talk to you today. Um, please join us uh, for future Citizen Science Corners where we get to highlight our dedicated volunteers. Um, and happy April, happy Citizen Science Month.